Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about Vesper and uh, take you step by step through the different possibilities of the Vesper model. <clears throat> it's assumed that you guys have watched the introduction video uh, of this already and that we're going to move on to this step, different steps. So here we go. When we do Vesper, we basically have different electron domains. or so we have these different regions where we're going to find electrons. I call those electron domains. Um, so as we go through this video, there are going to be up to six different domains. Those domains can be areas where electrons are being bonded together or areas that are unshared. So for our first domain, a single or one electron domain, is actually our simplest of all of our molecules. It's just the hydrogen molecule. That's our only example of this. So we have one region that is bonding. We have zero areas that they're unshared, okay? Um, what we get from that is a linear shape. There is no angle associated with this, and our example is hydrogen. So hydrogen bonded to itself is just going to be a single bond in there, one region for electrons, and no unshared pairs. So that's our first one, our linear shape molecule. Now when we go on to two electron domains, we have two options. We either can have two electron regions and nothing unshared, or one region that's being bonded and one that's being unshared, and we'll cover both of those. Okay, so in two bonding regions, if there's nothing unshared, we're going to linear shape from that. You're going to have a 180 degree angle, and we're going to use carbon dioxide as our example. So if we take a look at carbon dioxide, we know that carbon dioxide has a Lewis structure that looks like this. And I am purposely making it not linear in the Lewis structure. Okay, so for the Lewis, um, we see we have double bonds and we have some un unshared electrons on it. So right now our focus is on the center atom, okay, in terms of what its geometry is. For the three-dimensional or the Vesper shape for that, all we would draw is carbon bonded to oxygen bonded to another oxygen. We would not show the unshared pair, we would not show the unshared pairs, we would not show the double bonds, but we are required to show it in a linear fashion. Now, the angle between those two bonds is 180 degrees. Okay, so we need we know that. Now notice with this molecule, um, it is shown linearly and that we have to kind of show it that way. Okay, so that is our example when we have two bonding regions and nothing unshared. So on the carbon, notice that there's only two places that you find electrons being in bonds, here and here. There's nothing else on that carbon. Okay, now this next example of that is if we is our is nitrogen or dinitrogen, where dinitrogen is triple bonded to itself, okay? In that scenario, we have one region where we're unshared and we have one region where we have shared electrons in there. Now notice, a triple bond is still just considered one region, even though there's three bonds inside of there, okay? So when we draw this three-dimensionally, we would do a single line as such. So here's our Lewis, here's our 3D on this, okay? Uh, Shape-wise, we call this linear. There is no angle associated with it because it's only a single place that things are bonding. So we can't find the angle between bonds, okay? Um, so here's our second example where we have one bonding location or one place that things are being shared and we have one spot where they're not. Now these electrons still take up space out here, um, but they are, you know, 180 degrees or they are linear away from that other spot. We just don't show them in the three-dimensional model as we do that, Okay. Now, when we move on to three electron domains, our thing gets a little bit more complex, okay? Because we have three options now. We can have three bonding regions with zero unshared, two bonding regions with one unshared, one bonding region with two unshared, and we'll go through all three of those, okay? So our example for our three bonding region is carbon dioxide. So if we do its Lewis structure, we know that carbon double bonds to oxygen, single bonds to oxygen, and has another single bond to oxygen. Okay, we want to bracket this whole thing and say it's a two minus. Okay, now if you look inside the carbon, it has three locations one, two, three locations that we have bonds. Again, the double bond counts as one. So we have three locations it's bonding and there's nothing else on it. So there is no other unshared. That's why we get a three zero ratio here. Okay. So when we draw the three-dimensional structure for this, we have carbon in the center, and coming off it at 120 degrees apart are three oxygens. 
we're still able now in this model to show it in a two-dimensional plane because we are haven't gone to three dimensions yet. Okay, so we're still able just to show our two-dimensional plane with this. Okay, so that's our first example. If we go to our next example, where we have um, two bonding regions and one unshared uh, region on that, our example of that is ozone. So if we do the Lewis structure for ozone, we see this effect. Where now you have one, two areas where they're sharing electrons, and then off that center atom you have one area up here that they're not sharing electrons. So we have a two to one ratio in terms of um, where this being bonded and where we're unshared up here. Okay. Now when we do the the three dimensional structure for this, we have oxygen. And these unshared electrons up here, they take up space. They do take up space, and they actually push this bond down. So as a result, we actually have a bend in our molecule here. That's why we call it a bent shape. Now, the angle between here and here is actually slightly less than 120 degrees inside of here. All right? Notice, again, we do not show those other electrons on here. Okay. Um, you could visualize them as being up here, taking up this space like that. You can do a visual that way, but we do not show that in our final product as we do this. So we just have this kind of bent-shaped molecule shown here for this one. Okay. Now, the next possibility is we have one bonding region, and we have two areas where there's unshared electrons for our three electron domains. Now, this only happens on an exterior atom. So if we actually go back to ozone, but now we focus on this exterior oxygen, we notice it has one bonding region right here, but then it has a region of unshared electrons here and a region of unshared electrons over here. So if I actually just kind of draw in a little mouse head kind of on top of that, okay, um, what we get is we have one, two, three different regions where we are bonding our electrons. Um, so one reason where we are bonding them here, and we get two that are not bonding over here. Okay, When that happens, in terms of drawing it, it'll always be part of a bigger molecule. So we don't really actually draw that in terms of a three-dimensional structure because it's just part of the ozone that we already drew. Um, <clears throat> but it is part of this molecule, so we do talk about that. You will get a single bonding region with two unshared when you have an exterior atom involved with that, okay? Um, so that is our third option there. And we're going to see this with all of our options. We always have an option of one versus the unshared being linear and being an exterior atom, okay? Now, when we go on to our four electron domains, in four electron domains, we actually have four different options, okay? So we can have four areas that it bonds, three areas that it bonds with one unshared, two areas it bonds with two unshared, or we can again have that exterior atom where we have one spot of bonds with a bunch of unshared electrons on that, okay? And down below we see those different options kind of shown here um, in our slide. So let's start with the four bonding regions. In the four bonding regions, our example here is methane. So methane has a formula of CH4. Oh, let me kind of do this a little bit better spot for you. Okay, so methane Lewis structure would look like this as CH4. Now here's the problem. When we get to our three-dimensional shape for this, we now need to show this so we have molecules going in and out of a plane of paper. Okay. So the hard thing is how do you show three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional space? The way we do that is we use kind of a pie-shaped line to show things coming out. And then we use a dotted line to show things going in. Okay, so three-dimensionally what we would show is the carbon has one, two of them on the same plane. There is always one coming out at us, and there's always one going in at us, okay? So that's how we would show that. Now the angle between these here is about 109.5 degrees. I think on the slide I just said 109. Either one's fine. Just say about 109 degrees, okay? And then we give this a te tetrahedral shape to it. So we call this tetrahedral, okay? So this is characterized by having four areas that you bond. Um, 
and then zero areas of unshared. So notice on that carbon, it's just one, two, three, four areas of bonding that come off that. All right. If we go to the next possibility where we have three areas are being bonded and one unshared, okay, just imagine that same shape where we've just taken off one of those uh, bonding areas and made it unshared. Okay. An example for that we have is ammonia. So the ammonia Lewis, Lewis structure looks like this, where now we have this <clears throat> unshared electron kind of hanging out over the top, looks like a little ghost there, and it's actually pushing down on the rest of the molecules. So this is not trigonal planar, this is not a, a flat molecule, it actually has three dimensions to it because of this fourth piece here. Now when we draw that for our three-dimensional structure, ammonia still has one two hydrogens in the same plane, but that third one, that one cannot be in the same plane because it's being pushed down by this, this pair of electrons right here. It's being pushed by this. So because of that, you have to draw it either going into the paper or you can actually still draw it, if you want, coming out. Either one is acceptable. They're both acceptable ways of drawing this, but you cannot show it linearly. Or sorry, you cannot show a planar. So you have to identify that one of those hydrogens is either going into the paper or coming out of the paper for that. Okay? And that's going to be, of course, um, <clears throat> an angle, again, that is close to 109. Now, because this set of electrons here takes up more space, we actually reduce our angle down to about 107 degrees on that one. And we call that a trigonal pyramidal shape instead of a trigonal planar because it's actually more like a pyramid shape when you actually build it up. Okay? Now, keep it moving on to our next one. In the case that we have two areas that are bonding and two areas that are unshared, that's our classic water molecule. Okay, so water, we know, has two bonds coming off it. And we have these two regions up here and down here that those electrons are unshared on it. Okay, so in that case, both of those unshared electrons are actually going to cause those two hydrogens to bend and into a kind of a bent shape to that. So the water molecule three-dimensionally is drawn with a bend in it and the angle between there because those extra electrons take up even more space is only 105 degrees in this case. Okay, It can't be linear because these unshared electrons take up space and they push these other hydrogens down away from being linear. Okay. So we want to make sure that we draw this to the bench shape with the 105 degree angle in it, okay? So uh, we call this bent, and we've had a bent one before, but in this case, that bent is, has a 105 degree angle. The last time we had a bent one, it was a 120 degree angle. So we do have two different bent molecules in this. All right, now our last one again is anytime you're dealing with, um, if we go back to our slide here, one bonding region with three unshared pairs. So an example of that, uh, would be something that's an exterior atom. So let's say you had carbon attached to a fluorine as such. Okay, so if we're looking at this exterior atom right here, we notice we have one spot that's bonded, and then we have one, two, three areas that are un- bonded or they're shared regions, okay? So just like before, you're always going to have a linear shape to it because you only have a single spot that is being part of a bond, and there is no angle associated with this, <clears throat> but we do have these three other spots that kind of come off this that come from this um, tetrahedral original shape that comes in here, okay? So that's our example of when we have one bonding region and then three of the unshared pairs of the exterior atom, okay? Now, that brings us to having five and six electron domains. In five and six electron domains, now we're dealing with sulfur and phosphorus being those exceptions to the rule, okay? Um, there are lots of different combinations of this, because obviously if you have five bonding regions, you can have four, three, two, and one again. Same thing here. But for our purposes, all we care about is the most basic one, which is five bonding regions with no one shared, six bonding regions with zero unshared and also okay in those two cases we end up getting your classic uh, phosphorus with five halogens or sulfur with six halogens 
And when we look at those, the names we give those are trigonal bipyramidal or octahedral. Now, angles are kind of tough for trigonal bipyramidal because there, there's two different angles in that. And then for the octahedral, they're all on 90-degree angles in there. So I'll draw those up for you guys both also. So with phosphorus, when it has um, five chlorines coming off it, two of them are going to be in the plane. One has to go into the paper. One of them can also be in the plane on this side. And there has to be one that comes out at you like this. Okay, So that's how you would draw a trigonal uh, bipyramidal shaped one uh, for the phosphorus right here. Okay, um, and our angles, of course, between the coming in and out of the plane and up here, those are a 90 degree angle, but the angle between here and here is a 120 degree angle in that. So that's where you get your two different angles in there. Now for sulfur with the six fluorines, you end up having a fluorine coming out of, or up, a fluorine coming down. You have one in the plane this way, one in the plane that way. And then you have one coming out at us. And you have one going back into the paper, okay? So that's how you would draw that one. And then, of course, all of your angles here are all 90 degrees in the case of an octahedral molecule. Okay, guys, that was very quick uh, through this video. We do have some other videos that are posted from a separate source that goes through this much slower with much more visual graphics. So if that was too quick for you, please go through those other videos also and come see me for extra help on Vesper Shapes. Okay? Keep in mind, you are responsible for drawing them, naming them, and knowing their angles. Okay? All of that based off their Lewis structures. Thank you.